Bonjour à toutes et à tous et merci de nous joindre dans la salle de presse virtuelle de la Commission européenne pour notre réunion de presse quotidienne, le Midday Briefing. Nous sommes le lundi 27 juillet. J'ai quelques annonces à vous faire avant de, passer, de vous passer la parole pour vos questions éventuelles. Euh, je commence avec un point d'agenda euh, pour la présidente euh, von der Leyen euh, pour cette semaine. La présidente rencontrera demain par vidéoconférence les coprésidents de l'intergroupe antiracisme et diversité euh, du Parlement européen. C'est tout pour euh, les annonces de ma part. J'appelle maintenant Ariana qui a des annonces à vous faire sur les plans d'investissement pour l'Europe. Merci, Dana, et bonjour. The European Fund for Strategic Investments is backing two financing agreements signed by the European Investment Bank Group. First, the European Investment Bank Group and Banco Santander Consumer Portugal have signed an agreement to provide 587 million euros to small and medium-sized businesses affected by the coronavirus pandemic. SMEs account for about 77% of total employment in Portugal. Second, the European Investment Fund is investing 30 million euros into Primo Space, an early stage Italian venture fund. Primo Space will invest in technology spin offs, startups, and SMEs. It will work closely with the Italian research and academic world including the Italian Space Agency, to bring the most promising technologies and entrepreneurial teams to the market. The European Investment Fund financing is also supported by Horizon 2020 and the new Innofin Space Equity Pilot. You can find more details about both projects in the press releases which we have published in today's daily news. Thanks. Thank you very much, Ariana. I will now call Stefan on screen to give you some news about cohesion policy. Stefan, are you there? Uh, bonjour tout le monde, vous m'entendez? Oui, on t'entend. Très bien, excellent. Euh, Aujourd'hui, la Commission européenne lance un appel à manifestation d'intérêt pour des partenariats thématiques entre régions européennes. Ces régions pourraient piloter des projets d'innovation pour soutenir la réponse et la reprise suite à la pandémie du coronavirus. L'objectif de cet appel est d'aider les régions à saisir les opportunités émergentes de la crise, à développer leur résilience et à s'appuyer sur la transformation verte et digitale ou numérique pour la reprise des secteurs les plus touchés, comme par exemple les secteurs de santé et le tourisme. L'appel est soutenu par un budget global de 400 000 euros du Fonds européen de développement régional et l'appel sera ouvert jusqu'au 7 septembre 2020. Comme d'habitude, vous allez trouver plus d'informations dans notre Daily News et notre communiqué de presse en ligne. Ça, c'était la, la, la première annonce. La deuxième annonce que j'ai pour vous, c'est le fait que la Commission européenne a également approuvé un investissement de 47 millions d'euros du Fonds européen de développement régional pour construire un hôpital d'urgence, un hôpital régional d'urgence de plus de 800 lits à Craiova en Roumanie. Ce projet améliorera l'accès de la population locale à des soins de santé de qualité, notamment une chimiothérapie vitale pour les, pour les euh, patients atteints de cancer. Et encore une fois, vous allez trouver plus d'informations dans notre Daily News. Merci. Merci beaucoup Stéphane. Euh, C'est tout pour nos annonces d'aujourd'hui. Nous, nous pouvons passer maintenant à vos questions si vous êtes préparés. Euh, je vous invite comme d'habitude de nous indiquer que vous voulez euh, poser une question en soulevant votre main électroniquement. Je vois que Lily a une question. So, Lily, uh, you intend to ask a question. Please go ahead. Uh, 
I understand that your mic is not open, Lily. Now it works. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can see you and we can. Okay, hear. great. All good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I have a question about Hungary. Um, so, with uh, the demise largely of one of the um, last remaining big independent media outlets in Hungary. I was wondering if you have an update into any inquiries the Commission is making um, into uh, potential illegal state aid or competition problems in the media sector in Hungary. Thank you. Thank you for your question, Lily. It has several angles. So, first of all, on uh, media uh, pluralism and media uh, freedom, uh, I think that our there our position is uh, well known and the members of the college, uh, in particular Vice President uh, Jourova, uh, who is in charge of this issue, has made it known very vocally, um, for instance, in the European Parliament uh, during an exchange which took place uh, in uh, May and we have raised our concerns uh, in, in various fora. On the more specific state, state aid issue, Ariana can provide you an update. Thanks, Dana, and uh, hi, Lily. What I can say is that the Commission currently has one uh, pending state aid complaint dating from 2016, which relates to the Hungarian broadcasting uh, system. The assessment of this complaint is, is ongoing. In 2019, the Commission received a second complaint uh, relating to alleged state support to government-friendly uh, media. Thank you very much, Ariana. Any additional questions today for Ariana on the same topic? Um, I see that Kanta wishes to ask a question. I take it is also for Ariana. So, Kanta, go so, ahead. Kanta, go ahead. Hey, hello, do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, we can Excellent. hear you. Excellent. Okay, it's actually a follow up of what Lily. Kanta? We lost you on video. We lost you on video. Uh, and we got uh, you back. Sorry. We got you back. Okay, so, sorry for that. I don't know. Like maybe my internet is already on holidays. Uh, it's, it's just a follow-up on, uh, on Ariana because I, I did ask uh, for like access of information request the commission analysis on the second complaint sent last year uh, by the Mertek group and uh, my request was denied uh, because the commission was still investigating uh, on the matter. So I was wondering like would it be possible to have like maybe something on Basically, what, 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 are, what are you thinking on illegal state aid and uh, what's happening in Hungary for the media market? Thank you. Thank you for your question, Quentin. You know how delicate it is to talk about um, ongoing uh, investigations and uh, uh, cases, uh, but I'll, 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 I'll give the floor to Ariana to see if there is anything that she can add on um, investigating uh, upon complaints um, uh, which have been lodged. Well, first, let me say that I'm very envious of your internet being on holidays already. I think it's a shared dream. Uh, on, on the complaints, as I said, the 2016 one uh, was on, uh, on uh, the broadcasting system and we are uh, assessing it, so it's an ongoing investigation. The 2019 one was on uh, government-friendly media. Now, of course, I don't know the specifics of, of your request uh, to uh, access documents, but of course, um, I'm happy to to look into it uh, and then get back to you bilaterally eventually. Okay, thank you, Ariana. I see that Mose has a question also for Ariana. I take it. So if that's the case... So if that's the case... Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Dana. Yes, it's also somehow linked to the previous questions about media freedom, especially in Hungary. Uh, as you recall, um, uh, there was a report uh, published last week, I think, on Thursday uh, by this uh, Center for Media Pluralism and Freedom uh, at the European uh, University Institute, uh, which, uh, let's say, uh, looked at uh, a number of variables and policy areas for all EU member states when it comes to media pluralism and media freedom. Uh, and I noticed that in that report, and that is my question, uh, let's say there was a scoring of all countries uh, separately for each uh, policy area. 
the, the four the four areas altogether. But I, I didn't find any say any ranking when it consolidated scoring for all countries uh, where they can be compared be compared and ranked. Uh, uh, and I didn't get any explanation from the center itself in the meantime, at least. So I wonder if you could explain to me. Thank you. Well, Mose, I think well, it's Mose, very difficult, I think it's very difficult for, us to for us to obtain questions from you, uh, which you have requested uh, of the center. Uh, what we can say on uh, media freedom and plur pluralism is to state our long-standing uh, position on uh, how we view uh, media freedom and pluralism. I think that this has been done in many occasions, um, including, as I, as I said a few minutes ago, by the member of the college in charge uh, of uh, this matter, uh, where she signaled um, several uh, issues that we had in relation to, or several concerns that we have in relation to uh, media uh, pluralism, uh, uh, or to media-related issues uh, in Hungary, uh, but we cannot speak at this uh, stage uh, for the center uh, to whom I understand you have asked uh, uh, questions uh, more specifically. I see that uh, Katalin wishes to ask a question. Katalin, go ahead. Coming back to the first complaint, which was filed at 2016, could you tell us what does it, why does it take so long uh, to analyze a complaint more than four years now? Thank you. Thank you very much, Catalina. Thank you very much, Catalina. On this specific complaint, I won't be able to the details on the specific complaint in general, uh, the timing of the assessment of complaints depends on various factors, for example, on the complexity of the case or on the length of the submission, on the number of submissions. So there's a number of reasons why a, compl a complaint can take more or less time, but I wouldn't uh, be able to enter in the specifics of this one in particular, which, okay. as I said, is still ongoing, just to be clear. Thanks. Yes. Thank you, uh, Ariana. Um, I see that Oliver wishes to ask a question to Ariana. Oliver, go ahead. Um, we can see you very well, Oliver, but we cannot hear you. There must be something with the volume. Unfortunately, we still can't, can't hear you. It doesn't work, Oliver, so if you don't mind, we will try to, to come back to you, hoping that you will um, sort out the sound problem. So we will try to take, in the meantime, a question from Catherine. I take it it's on the same subject, and then we will try to go back to Oliver, hoping that it will work. Catherine? Hi, I'm Dana. Uh, I'm sorry, but that response is completely inadequate. You're saying that since 2016 you've been investigating this and you still are unable to give some sort of response on what's happening. This is a complete joke. I mean, the, the Commission has taken great pride in being able to uh, present and uh, get a, a, a recovery fund approved. This is four years. It's a disgrace. What are you going to do about it? Thank you for your question or for your uh, statement um, as well, uh, Catherine. So as Ariana tried to explain, um, complaints or following up upon complaints uh, can sometimes be a complex process, uh, depending on the nature of the complaint, the matter that is uh, under investigation, the a need for additional information which needs to be requested uh, from the complainant or from other uh, relevant uh, actors. This one, uh, as, uh, as Ariana has said, has indeed taken uh, since 2016 and there is no conclusion uh, to uh, it yet. Um, and to be reassured that because media pluralism, freedom and the situation of media um, in all EU countries, but specifically in Hungary, is uh, uh, important um, and it's a priority uh, for the Commission. Uh, work 
uh, continues on that and all the efforts necessary will be invested to achieve a conclusion. Ariana, anything else no. specifically on this? I think you, you said it all, yes, thanks. Thank you very much. Catherine, I think you have a, a follow-up. Please go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Dana. That is just empty rhetoric. I mean, we, are, we, we, we think it's urgent, we think it's important, blah, blah, blah. You clearly, demonstrably, do not think it is important because that c complaint was lodged in 2016. QED, you don't think it's important. You don't think it's urgent. What are you gonna do about it? Catherine, I think that we uh, attempted to provide an answer both on the substance of the matter and also on the issue of timing, responding to your uh, uh, claim uh, and statement that it's uh, been taking uh, too long to uh, provide an answer to uh, this complaint. I think that this is all we can say today on both aspects, timing and substance. Um, and Ariana will provide further updates as we move along uh, in this specific case. I hope that in the meantime, we can hear Oliver because his hand is still raised and I hope that the microphone or the sound issue has been solved. We can see you well, but we still can't hear you. We can see that you try to speak, but there is an issue with the sound. So, um, Oliver is no longer uh, there. Um, I wonder if other journalists have any questions for us today on the matter at hand that we discussed, which is uh, Hungary. No, I don't see any hands raised. Um, and um, I wonder if you have any other questions about any other topics for us today. In the meantime, Oliver uh, wrote, uh, because we can't hear him, and his question is basically similar as Catherine's, which is why does it take us four years to look into uh, this uh, complaint? Uh, yes, we got a question, Oliver. Uh, it's a fair one, uh, if I may say so. Um, and uh, Ariana will get back to you with further updates uh, on this as we receive some. All right, I see a question from Agathe, from Agence Europe. I take it it's not for Ariana. Um, so Agathe, go ahead. Bonjour, en effet, c'est au sujet de la Pologne qui menace de se retirer de la Convention d'Istanbul. Je voulais juste savoir, Elena Dali avait laissé entendre que ce serait son objectif principal de faire de la ratification par l'UE de la Convention, pardon, de faire en sorte que l'UE ratifie la Convention. Je voulais savoir si ça tenait toujours et si des mesures seraient envisagées dans le contexte actuel. Merci pour la question, Agathe. C'est une question pour Adalbert qui va essayer de se connecter de chez lui. Adalbert, est-ce que tu es là Oui, on te Bonjour, voit. je suis bien là et, et j'ai effectivement le plaisir de, de remplacer Christian euh, aujourd'hui. Euh, donc, en, en réponse à cette question spécifique, je, je ne peux que réitérer que l'accession de l'Union européenne à la Convention euh, d'Istanbul euh, concernant la prévention et le, la lutte contre la violence euh, contre les femmes et la violence domestique demeure une priorité euh, pour cette Commission. L'Union européenne a signé la Convention d'Istanbul en juin 2017 et depuis ce moment-là, la, la, la Commission travaille étroitement avec le Conseil euh, afin de, euh, afin de euh, terminer le processus d'accession de l'Union européenne. Euh, cette, cette Convention est une, est une Convention importante. Elle concerne la lutte euh, euh, contre la, la violence contre les femmes. Euh, C'est un phénomène qui n'a pas sa place dans les sociétés européennes et nous devons continuer à travailler ensemble pour le combattre. Adalbert, y a-t-il d'autres questions pour nous aujourd'hui Je ne vois pas. Si, je vois euh, une question. Je vois une main levée de Romero Nazareth. La parole est à toi. Si jamais ton microphone fonctionne, parce que je vois qu'on a des problèmes de son. 
So it doesn't seem, seem to work for you, uh, but in the meantime, uh, so you, you can try perhaps to fix your mic problem, problem, but in the meantime, I see that Anne Rovan has raised her hand. Anne, tu as la parole. Espérons que ça marche pour Anne, parce que sinon, on tire la conclusion qu'on enchaîne des problèmes techniques aujourd'hui. Anne, est-ce que tu nous entends Oui, je vous entends. Est-ce que vous m'entendez Oui, nous t'entendons. Oui, nous t'entendons. Ah, bonjour, bonjour, bonjour. J'avais une question sur euh, les, les décisions qui sont prises actuellement par un certain nombre d'États membres pour euh, contenir hein, la reprise de l'épidémie de, de coronavirus. Euh, savoir si vous regardez ça, s'il y aura des recommandations, parce que ce qu'on voit pour le moment, c'est que ce sont plutôt des mesures en ordre dispersé, euh, très variables d'un État membre à un autre. Voilà, qu'est-ce que vous pourriez dire là-dessus Merci beaucoup. Effectivement, Juan, c'est quelque chose que, euh, que nous regardons de très près. Comme la commissaire Kyriakides a dit dans cette salle de presse il y a deux semaines, nous avons sorti, nous avons sorti un certain nombre de recommandations nombre des... pour les États membres que nous pensons seront utiles pour les guider, pour, pour être préparés pour des nouvelles résurgences des, des, des coronavirus. Stéphane pourra se connecter pour te donner plus de détails. Oui, bonjour. Vous m'entendez de, de nouveau Oui Allô Vous m'entendez Oui. Ah, ok, très bien, très bien, très bien. Donc, oui, euh, comme tu, comme tu l'as remarqué, Dana, le, le 15 juillet, donc, la Commission a adopté une communication concernant la préparation pour des nouvelles résurgences du virus et nous constatons, en effet, que dans plusieurs États membres, euh, on remarque ces, ces résurgences. Euh, ce qui est très important dans cette communication, c'est que nous, a, nous, nous essayons d'aider les États membres à mieux euh, euh, gérer ce genre de situation, par exemple, en, ayant, en, organisa, en organisant suffisamment de testing, euh, en assurant du contact tracing, en continuant une bonne euh, surveillance euh, de, de la santé pub, publique évidemment et en assurant euh, l'accès euh, aux euh, contre-mesures médicaux comme par exemple l'équipement de protection, médicaments, etc. Euh, vous, vous vous souvenez que l'ECDC a lancé un risk assessment il y a deux semaines et l'ECDC euh, continue à suivre de près la situation. Ce qui est très important pour l'ECDC, c'est que nous continuons à assurer un bon monitoring, un bon testing, de bonnes euh, interventions non pharmaceutiques aussi, un bon euh, euh, contact tracing, une identification rapide et investigation dès que nous constatons des résurgences euh, localisées. Euh, euh, et dans tout cela, ce qui compte, ce qui est très important, c'est non seulement de mettre sur place des bons systèmes de bon monitoring, mais d'être toujours prêt à ajuster et de prendre les nouvelles mesures qui pourraient s'imposer. Comme vous le savez, important là-dedans aussi, c'est également l'importance d'une bonne coordination entre les États membres dans le cadre des diff différents forums qu'on a établis au niveau politique, mais aussi au niveau euh, technique. Donc, nous continuons à suivre de près euh, euh, ce qui se passe dans les États membres et nous sommes en contact avec les États membres, évidemment. Merci. Merci beaucoup, Stéphane. Euh, y a-t-il d'autres questions pour Stéphane au sujet du coronavirus Je pense que Samuel a une question pour Stéphane, so vas-y, Samuel. Hello, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Great, wonderful. It's not actually for Stéphane, it's going back to Hungary, actually, and the ongoing erosions to media freedom out there. Um, I'd like to know the extent to which the Commission's rule of law mechanism could potentially be tied to the importance of media pluralism, and by extension, whether you think that media pluralism could in fact be part of the conditionality regime as part of the recovery fund. Thank you. Samuel, so Samuel, for this, so for I will this. give first the floor to uh, Adalbert to walk you through uh, the uh, preparations and the 
uh, ongoing work on the uh, rule of law uh, report. Adalbert, are you still there? Yes, I'm indeed still here. Uh, thanks a lot, um, Samuel. So I, um, I can confirm that indeed the new uh, rule of law mechanism that we are working on will cover issues uh, relating to media plural pluralism. And moreover, uh, several projects that the EU is funding aim at mapping risks and violations uh, and also assist uh, journalists, including also uh, the project that actually Moser referred to uh, earlier today. Um, We're also uh, determined to further support media freedom and pluralism as part of the uh, European Democracy Action Plan, which is also something that uh, will come uh, later this year. So th there, is a, there is a number of, um, of mechanisms for us to address this issue. As regards the second part of your question, Samuel, in relation to uh, the conditionality linked to the use of um, uh, EU uh, funds, um, part of the uh, agreement reached at the European uh, Council uh, last week, as we have had the opportunity to say in a number uh, of occasions following that uh, agreement, we are working out now the, the way forward uh, on uh, how this could be implemented. Uh, we are looking at the various options and we will uh, come forward uh, with news as soon as we have some, but at this stage, uh, we are happy with the references which were made in the European Council conclusions, both to the rule of law and to the protection of the EU's financial interests, and we are working out the uh, implementation methods that would be the adequate ones to uh, put it in practice. So no further news at this stage between a more specific uh, 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 link as you refer to. I think we have another Samuel uh, wishing to ask a question. Samuel from Associated Press. Samuel. Samuel. Oui, bonjour. C'était uh, un follow-up à la question de Anne uh, par rapport au, au déplacement uh, dans l'espace Schengen uh, du temps du coronavirus. Et um, étant donné qu'il reste à peu près un mois de vacances encore et, et des milliers de, de chassés croisés de voyageurs. Est-ce que la, la Commission euh, aurait envie de recommander une limitation de ces voyages pour raisons touristiques Merci pour la question, Samuel. Il y a là aussi plusieurs aspects. Il y a un aspect frontière, euh, il y a un aspect euh, santé. Je vais commencer par euh, donner la parole euh, à Stéphane et qui, euh, qui pourra te rappeler euh, encore une fois quelle est notre position euh, concernant les mesures que les États membres devraient appliquer à quelle échelle pour contenir des futurs, euh, des futurs cas ou des contagions euh, avec le coronavirus. Stéphane, tu es là Oui, je suis de nouveau là. Brièvement, Stéphane, il a disparu. On réessaye, Stéphane Il y a une, une, un problème avec ton microphone. On lui donne le temps de, de résoudre ce problème. So we understand that Stefan lost his connection temporarily. We will give him a bit more time to, to reconnect. to answer to the question from Samuel. Yes, so I understand that this could uh, take uh, a few minutes. So in the meantime, I see that Anne has a new question, which is perhaps a follow-up. But we still need Stefan to be uh, live. Il n'y a, a, a pas de sujet euh, euh, d'ensemble au niveau de, de l'Union européenne. Oui, yes, Stéphane est back. Ah, sorry, guys. Um, did you hear anything I said or not? Because I. Hey, Stéphane, you were on a different channel, so <laughs> we still wait you to provide a fresh and complete answer to the question okay. from Samuel on okay. uh, Europeans holidaying and what would be our recommendations considering. Uh the fact that coronavirus seems to be flaring up in different spots. Yes. Um, Et la question uh, était en français, donc je t'invite oui. à répondre en français. Très bien. 
Désolé pour le, pour le fait que j'étais coupé. Je vous avoue que je ne suis pas extrêmement doué dans tout ce qui concerne IT. Donc, j'espère que je resterai en ligne maintenant, mais ça semble être le cas. Euh, non, en fait, je voulais rappeler un petit peu ce qui a été dit avant et euh, le, notamment la communication du 15 juillet où, euh, dans laquelle la Commission a adopté des recommandations pour mieux aider les États membres à gérer, justement, à préparer, à gérer ces situations de résurgence résur urgences telles qu'elles euh, se, se présentent. Euh, ce qui est très important, c'est que les États membres, euh, lorsqu'ils prennent des mesures dans ce domaine, assurent une bonne coordination entre eux. Pour cela, comme j'ai expliqué, il y a plusieurs forats de, 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 de coordination au niveau politique, mais aussi au niveau euh, technique. Euh, très important là-dedans et aussi, c'est pour nous, c'est de suivre les recommandations euh, du monde scientifique, entre autres du euh, ici d'ici. Mais donc, je pense que du point de vue euh, santé, euh, notre dernière communication euh, euh, du 15 juillet est un, un, un important point de départ. Merci. Merci beaucoup, Stéphane. Um, I see an interest from Uh, Mose, to ask a question. If it's for Stefan, please go ahead. Otherwise, I prefer that we keep the structure of taking now the coronavirus-related uh, questions before moving to other subjects. Understand, Mose, that it's uh, on coronavirus and could therefore be for Stefan, so go ahead. Another question to Stefan, I suppose, is something I've been wondering about for the last week. And that is, uh, what is, let's say, um, the current uh, key epide epidemiological indicator, uh, let's say, which is applied by the EU, by the Commission, when it comes to assessing, uh, let's say, uh, the risk and the traveling between member states. Uh, I understand that it's the task of the center in Stockholm, in Solna, ECDC, to provide uh, such indicators. Uh, and they used to publish something they call the 14-day incidence rate. But uh, it seems they've stopped with that, and now you talk about some kind of cumulative, cumulative rate. Uh, and I think the average is uh, 20 cases, reported cases, uh, per 100,000 inhabitants. Uh, uh, it is something uh, you and the Commission recognize uh, Uh, and and you, using when it comes to giving advice or, or, or proposing uh, something for the council uh, when it comes to decisions on uh, travels or from uh, third countries. Thank you. Thank you, Mose. Stefan, your turn. Uh, Yes, thank you very much, Mose, for, for this question. I think, as you said yourself, uh, our colleagues from the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control are the people who are doing this assessment and they use uh, the criteria that they uh, that they used to come to, to this assessment. So I think the ECDC is probably the, the, the first to contact when it comes to having a clear idea on all the criteria which are being taken into account. These include, obviously, uh, mortality rates. They also include the number of cases um, that have been reported. So there's... Uh, Um, uh, several criteria that are taken into account. These criteria, of, or rather the, the, the figures that are used, obviously um, require good reporting by the member states as well. It's uh, The ECDC relies on the reporting that's done by the member states, and then they apply these criteria um, to come to uh, the, their assessments. But again, I think it would be useful if you want to have a more detailed, specific grasp of all the different uh, criteria which are being used, that you contact the European Centre for Disease Prevention and control. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. Are there any additional questions for Stefan? I see several hands uh, uh, raised. So, Joe, you have the floor. Oh, I understand that first, uh, Mose has a follow-up question. So, Mose, please go ahead. Perhaps not a thank you for the opportunity, but uh, the In fact, I want to say I've been in contact with CDC a few uh, several times, but uh, I don't think I always get uh, clear answers from them for some reason. So that's why I'm also contacting you at the Commission, because I think you have better contact with them than us journalists, I would suppose. Thank you. We'll try to help as we can. And I, um, yes, I encourage you to stay in contact with Stefan uh, on this issue. Um, 
Joe has his hand raised, so I assume it's a question for Stefan, so go ahead, Joe. Joe, are you with us? With us. Yep. Yes, you are. Lovely. Can you hear me? Um, so I just wanted to ask about the British quarantine. So um, over the weekend, the British government asked people travelling from Spain to quarantine for 14 days after arriving in the UK. And um, given the kind of state and uh, kind of the increases in infection rates in some countries, they could also ask that of other countries. Is that kind of acceptable to the Commission to um, ask travellers from one member state to quarantine and not others while we're still kind of obeying the freedom of movement kind of rules as part of the transition period. Thank you. Joe, it would indeed uh, be uh, again uh, for Stefan. Um, as, uh, as, you, as you may know, the rules on quarantine are decided at the national uh, uh, level and there are actually quite some uh, moves around that uh, in the EU, but Stefan, Stefan can give you the, uh, the details. Yes, thank you, Joe, and thank you, Dana, indeed, for reminding that decisions to uh, adopt quarantines are decisions that are taken by member states. Again, in order to have a coherent approach across the European Union, we invite member states to keep each other very well informed about such measures. This being said, um, what is also important uh, f uh, from our point of view... Oh. <laughs> sorry, I was yes, gone. Uh, we keep my on losing God, Stefan. Uh, OK, OK, uh, I will try to really stay with you this time. So um, what I said was that um, what is important from our point of view is that when a member state decide that um, member state follow this or member states use the same approach towards regions or member states that are in the same epidemiological situation. So um, regions um, towards which a member state decides to apply a quarantine in the context of a return, we would accept that then the same approach or same quarantine approach is followed towards other regions, other member states which are in the same situation in order not to create a discrimination, I would say, between these different areas. So in one word, quarantines are indeed possible, but we uh, um, would expect that uh, this uh, rule of non-discriminating between regions with similar epidemiological situation is respected. Thank you. Indeed, thank you, Stefan. So the decisions to be based on objective criteria and on scientific grounds. Um, I see that Anne uh, wishes to ask a question. Anne, vas-y. Est-ce que tu nous entends? Anne, est-ce que tu es là? Anne, est-ce que tu es là? Probablement pas. Probablement pas. Donc, euh, oui, euh, ta main est levée de nouveau. Donc, euh, je me demande si tu as l'intention de poser une question et si tu nous entends. Anne, est-ce que tu es là? Bon, aujourd'hui, c'est plus compliqué. Oui, c'est plus compliqué, techniquement. Allô Oui, allô, allô. Anne, oui, nous Anne, nous oui. oui, mais je me suis emmêlée les pinceaux. J'aurais pas dû, j'ai appuyé sur le bouton. Et voilà, je suis, je suis désolée. Pardon, pardon, pardon. Est-ce qu'il y a d'autres questions pour nous aujourd'hui sur n'importe quel autre sujet Je ne vois pas de main levée, donc cela conclut notre rendez-vous de midi et nous vous donnons rendez-vous demain à midi, euh, virtuellement aussi. Merci beaucoup et bonne journée.